Lou Brock of the Cardinals lines a single to left center field. Lou Brock, but it doesn't work. There he goes. Safe, a stolen base. Watch it again. Munson has to hurry his throw, and it's wide. Stolen bases in 74. Lou draws a crowd everywhere he goes. No one, including Brock, who at 35 is the highest paid Cardinal in history. He's headed right after a record set by the legendary Ty Cobb, who holds the lifetime base stealing mark of 892. And that's number 876 for Lou. Now he's only 16 behind the Jordan. So 893 bases because he stole one at a time. Uh, the fact is, no matter how many bases you steal, you still have to put the same amount of effort, energies, and inputs into every effort out there. And so that's why, to me, a stolen base is a challenge of the moment and not a situation where you add in a number to a number. That night in San Diego was a mighty big moment because it established Brock as the greatest base stealer ever. An occasion like this goes beyond the momentary thrills of the game. It involves a lifetime of skill and effort. It's not been an easy thing, but the moment is here. And I, all I can say, looking back on it, uh, Randy, uh, I did it my way. No question, Lou, your way is unique. Huh? Lou Brock has been a one-man show in St. Louis for years. This will be his last time. He's now played 2,500 games, needs fewer than 100 hits to reach 3,000. Santiago fires, and there goes Brock. He steals second. Wasluski checks Brock and then pitches to Flood, and there goes Lou on another steal. He beats the throw easily. Usually does, but he wants to make sure that he can read McLean. He stole 25 bases his last 28 games of the season. Two down, Brock at first. There he goes. The throw, he's in there easily. He'll be up and on his way to third. Look at that daring lead by Brock. Lowlich tries to pick him off, but Lou immediately breaks for second. It's his second steal of the game and third of the series. Good hit and run, man. Can handle that bat. There goes Brock. The pitch blown inside, and Brock now has stolen four out of four. He's going. 
Outside the throw is a good one. He stole again. Rock now has five stolen bases in the series. Here he goes, and the throw was right there, but it hit Brock, I think, as he slid into it. You can see the throw hit Brock on the leg just as it hit the glove of Stanley and bounded away. So another stolen base for this great base runner. Flood comes up while Wilson worries about Brock. There goes that man again. His second stolen base of the game and his thievery promptly pays off. Flood at bat and Pat Dobson pitching. Lou Brock steals his seventh base, tying his own World Series record of a year before. And then there was Lou Brock. Here is Brock tying the all-time base-stealing record for a single season. He makes it, the throw goes into the outfield, and he heads for third. How many times he did that? Lou Brock tying the record, 104. Now here is Lou Brock breaking that record against the Phillies. 105 stolen bases. Well, I feel that, again, uh, the lack of appreciation for the stolen base. I think most people feel that a stolen base is an individual effort. And I can tell you right now, a stolen base is a two-man act based on team strategy. Uh, the man behind me is, is just as important as I am because he is the man that control whether you steal or whether you don't. And again, because people have the tendency to separate a stolen base from the overall strategy of the game, so far as maximizing your offense and putting pressure on the defense, uh, they look at it as individual performance. So individual performance does not have anything to do with a team per se. Uh, therefore, the importance, of the value of that to that team has nothing to do with that team overall uh, outcome. So I think that is the biggest reason, Ron, uh, as I look back at it.